Go. All right. This is a list of people I thought would would be nice to, to mention at the 100th anniversary party <clears throat> because I was I, I was at the Boston Center for so long and I had so many people helping us. Now, <clears throat> this is, these are not people of any particular importance. To me, they were important, but they were very important to the center. All right, here's a, here's a one. Louise Winston. She ran dances at, the, at Jamaica, the Unitarian Church in Jamaica. And uh, she was a, uh, also it was, for years, she was chairman of the Boston Center Weekend. <clears throat> and and I, I have some notes from her, and I don't know how she managed it, but she did. The, 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 the driving force was Louise Chapin, a wonderful woman and a beautiful dancer. She lived out in Lincoln. I don't know what that's got to do with this, but that's where she lived. She had to come in from out there. Louise Chapin. She sure helped me an awful lot when I joined the center. <clears throat> we'd go hand in hand. She, we'd go out for a walk and, she, and we'd go someplace. I don't know where the hell we'd go. M maybe down to the church where we had our Christmas parties. And then let me see. Then there was Elise Nichols, who was a violinist, who came from Ainsbury. She was a an Ainsbury family. Uh, she was a concert violinist. I'm going to say I think she played for the Boston Symphony, but I can't prove that. I have no information, but I think she did. At least she knew a man that played for the Boston Symphony, and when she needed to have her Violin restrung. He, he he did it. She always said his name, but of course, with my short-term memory, it's gone. I don't have that anymore. Another great, <clears throat> hard-working member of the for the bosses there was Ken Crook. He he had a friend named Edith Rankin. And they, they would go off dancing around places. Also, they were involved in, somehow, in the Cardigan Boston Center weekends, uh, which I taught at for a long time. Another woman who did who probably didn't do too much, but at least I'm going to say her name, was Sue Simons. Sue Simons was a Boston, sorry, that's not going to be right. She was a member from New York City, and but she was just a member of the center. But she taught for the Boston Center weekends occasionally. Okay. The other one who did a lot of work for not just Boston, but for English country dancing in general was Mae Gadd. And I can't tell you when Gay came over, but she was came over in 19 something or other. But she came over after Lily Conan. Now, Lily Conant came over in 1927. Don't quote me on that. And she... She was a great teacher and very firm and very vocal. <clears throat> I remember one time that she called Helena Kinnears and I to get up to dance the, uh, the Boatman. And neither one of us could remember how it went. And Gay was all upset. She said, what, 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 in that British accent. And she sounded like a duck with a fall. What, 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 I can tell you right now, when, when we got back to Boston, Helena broke out the dance and we, we learned it. I, I learned it again. And I, I still teach it. I love that. It, it's, it's not straightforward. You have to kind of mess around with it. But the Boatman's a super dance. Good tune. Okay. Another strong... Member of the Boston Center was 
Helen O. Osborne. And she, she was a philanthropist and brought over people from Megan gay. No, sorry, wrong. She brought over Cecil Sharp. She helped her, she helped to run a weekend at up it. Oh God. Here, here goes the mine. I'm, I'm dropping things out of there. Be patient, it'll come. That was a weekend run in Maine in Elliott. And they got rained out, poured rain. And so they gave that up. But Helen Sora would finance some of that stuff. She had the money and she was afraid to use she was afraid to use it or, or, or give it to us. I never saw her dance. I just I don't think I would have met her once. I'm working on that. She she was certainly a a dancer, and of course she owned pine woods. She bought pine woods up and kept buying up little chunks of it until she had this big piece of property down there. Well, how much big is it? How big is uh Pine was 26 acres, something like that. So it's, so it's not a postage stamp. And, but she brought them all, she brought them all up, chunk by chunk, piece by piece, block by block. And when, and when she was finished with it, she gave it to, to Lily Conan. And she told Lily she could do what she want with it. Well, we know what Lily did with it. She, she kept it and gave it back. So the back to us, Ellen Osborne Storo. March 23, 1915, the English Folk Dance and Song Society was founded in, in the United States. It was founded in New York, I think at the Colonial Hotel. I wrote that up, so it's in one of the newsletters. And, <clears throat> And let me see. So the the the, the both centers, the both societies, S S E S S N, Boston Center, out, were a hundred years old on that one day. And let me tell you, there was a big brouhaha over that. How how they're going to name it? How they're going to do it? Because it was an English dance group. And there was a small group there, and I think I think Sharp was here at that point in time, and I believe the EFDS hadn't hadn't formed up into the English Dance Society. And they came later. That'll take some research, which I, I don't have that end information in my fingertips. Mm. One of the hard workers of the society was. Uh, Art and Helena Cornelius. They did a lot of things in which they got no credit. <clears throat> Helena would go off teaching in, uh, I don't know, just teaching. She'd get an invitation to go teach, you know, do a workshop, and she'd go off. And sometimes she we, she got the kind of an invitation where we would have to go give a dance demonstration. I remember we did one at the uh, oh God, uh, the hotel right there in, in the square, and I nearly broke my hand. It was, a, a, it was a curtained wall, and I didn't realize that it was a concrete wall behind it. And I went to push it out of my way, and I, I belted my hand on it on the concrete wall. That was not a fun time. And then let me see. Another hard worker was Ellen J. Mandigo. She worked with me playing music for me, you know, a lot of the dances I was doing in the South Weymouth group. Then from there, <clears throat> from there, I decided we, we were, the society didn't have any money. We were flat broke most of the time. And so the way to make some money was to run food booths at the Neffa Festival. And, and she and I ran those. I, I, I say I, we ran them. Loads of other people ran them. I wasn't alone. Uh, Fran Clayton, my partner Frank Maloney, 
Ah, oh, let me see. Uh, the, the names aren't coming at the moment, but they, they might. I'm sorry on these long breaks, but my mind is not tip top anymore. Not that, not that it ever was. You know, as I read these names down, I really think of these people, how much, how, how grateful I am to them for helping to keep the society on track. Now that meant I was pushing like crazy most of the time. Uh, I mean, all I tell you is that somebody else that helped us with the food booth was, was uh, Mary Blomberg and Dan Pearl. Dan Pearl used to make chocolate chocolate cheesecakes and bring them in. Oh, here's, here's another one that was a big help in the early, 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 early days. That was Irving, Irving Davis. Now, he was president of NEFA, and I'm not sure it was right at that time, but he, but I saw, I, I, he, I know he was, he was coming to dance with us on Wednesday nights, and believe it or not, we were still dancing Wednesday nights, uh, way back when I first came into the, into the society. I came into the society about, about 1953. I can't pinpoint, excuse me, I can't pinpoint that exactly, but it's not far off. And then I danced every Wednesday night, after that, because I go pick Ellen up and she and I go together. And we also, also she and I would go to a lot of the, the Boston Center Folk Dance Weekends and Cardigan and things, things like that. <clears throat> Let me, where's my list here? Herman David. A jolly little man. His son-in-law was Ted Sonella. Oh, here's another name, Edith Moore. Here was an, a, a, 